Hey guys, what's going on and welcome back to another video. So today I've got a really fun deck to um, showcase to you guys um, and teach you guys how to play. And so all of my videos kind of are in traditional game mode, so traditional standard or um, traditional historic. So what that means is that those modes are best of three and so they utilise the sideboard. Now for this video what I decided to do was actually was to go for a deck which is best of one because I know a lot of you guys and most people don't actually play um, uh, best of three game modes and instead you go for best of one. So um, in this video I'll show you guys um, what I think is currently um, the best deck for um, for best of one historic and I think it's one of the best decks if you want to rank up to mythic really quickly. Okay so now with that being said let's focus on the game a little bit. So whenever an angel enters you gain full life. I mean I think it's just standard to start off with Bishop of Wings over Daxos. Alright he could have a fatal push here but we'll have to see. He does hit us with a fatal push. Alright, let's go. Let's start off with Daxos. Then we'll go to Speaker of the Heavens. Alright. So, nice and easy like that. So, um, while this guy decides what he wants to do for this turn, probably just passing it back to me. Oh, go for a cry. Um, um, I want to ask you guys if you could subscribe um, to the channel. Um, so this channel is basically, um, the theme of it is helping you guys get to Mythic. Um, I've gotten to Mythic every season for the past, um, since February last year. Um, so I feel like I've got, got a, a lot of good you know, tips and tricks uh, to help you guys rank up quickly. Alright, so now on this turn we're just going to hold up Collected Company. I think that that's the best um, line to take for this game. Okay, cast down. We'll resolve. It's possible we could play Collected Company in response, um, but I don't think so. This is just a mono removal deck, isn't it? Like This is just one of the most unfun decks to play against as a creature deck. Collected Company. Now, what do we want to get? What would be the best deck for us, uh, best cards for us to get here? Alright, so Soul Warden, I don't like the look of here. Speaker, probably not. I'm thinking Righteous Valkyrie and Resplendent Angel. I think those two because it's two big frets. Um, okay, now let's just swing him. Then play this on the uh, white side and pass back. Uh, that is because the only card in the deck which needs green is um, Collective Company. And so if you've already got a green mana untapped, then what you want to do is you do want to go for... Okay. Eventually this guy should run out of removal spells. Um, play another Collective Company... Let's go for Righteous, two copies of Righteous Valkyrie here. We should gain four life, I think. Okay. Oh, we've got a creature's toughness, sorry, not power. So we're actually going to gain eight life here. Okay. So... What are we going to do here then? She gained five or more life. Okay. So I'm not sure how many wrath effects he's got, but what I'm going to do, I'm going to play it like this, and hopefully he doesn't have a wrath effect. Um, so we're kind of going wide here. Okay, so now we gain 10 life. 
Um, Alright, hopefully no wrath effects and we could just win the game. Alright, cool. So we win our first game then um, and yeah, let's get into our second game. Alright, into our second game we go then and we are against a Gigantha opponent. So what that means is it could either be John Sacrifice or Mono Red Aggro. Uh, both of those are kind of decent matchups. Okay, so it's a Mono Red Aggro kind of opponent. Alright, Double Collective Company is really nice in the hand. Um, can help us try and hit um, cards such as okay, uh, Skyclave Apparition. Perfect. We'll play Daxos here. Uh, nice blocker. Lines up quite well against the opponent's deck. Then we'll play Angel of Vitality. Or do we? Or do we just play Righteous Valkyrie? <sighs> Interesting. Ooh, or do we just play Skyclave Apparition with what we've just seen? I'm going to play Righteous Valkyrie here. Uh, that's because it gives us quite a good um, blocker for Midnight Reaper here. Uh, so it lines up quite well. We could have gone for a Skyclave Apparition. Um, okay. We'll go to combat and just swing with a Righteous Valkyrie here. He's got a Collected Company. Um, that's pretty obvious. Collected Company, sure. And then what we'll do is we'll wait for him to swing next turn uh, to play our collected company. Um, and we'll, we'll try and like set up lethal. Um, that's quite easy to do with this deck, so it shouldn't be that difficult here. It's just deciding what he wants to get. Okay. Pass to end turn. What's he going to do? So he's going to pass to attackers, sure. What are we going to get ourselves then? Let's go for this. <laughs> okay, so we just make some really, really fat creatures uh, to block. And we'll do all of this so he draws um, six cards. But, you know, more importantly than him drawing six cards, he's going to be taking six life. So we really are just trying here to line up the most amount of damage for him possible. So there we go. We win our second game. <laughs> See, this is how easy it is to farm wins with this deck. All right, here we go again then. So once again, we've got a really good hand. See how this game goes. This is probably, I mean, from his Ashiok thing, it, yeah. So he is a Demir kind of player. Okay, now hopefully we can just out, um, out aggro this guy. For Erasure, so it'll be interesting to see what he takes here. Uh, Righteous Valkyrie or Angel of Vitality. Okay, so he takes the Righteous Valkyrie. Um, our hand currently is quite weak to Wrath effects. Um, okay, so let's go for here, Angel of Vitality. So this is just going to help us be able to really um, accelerate our life gain. Makes Angel of Vitality a 4-4. Four, four. Next turn we will be able to make a um, an Angel token with our speaker. And also hold up. Okay, so he's got Collected Company there to deal with our... Um, he's got Fort Erasure, sorry, to deal with our Collected Company. Um, yeah, we, we've just got to try and um, draw reasonably well here. And him not to have a Wrath effect. Swing in like this, we get to 27 life, and 
let's make ourselves a 4-4. Now, we don't want to play our off range of vitality because we do want to play some uh, have some threats left over for if he has a wrath effect. Uh, he doesn't. Okay, we, we've got another really nice hand here. Um, yeah. Really, really nice. <sighs> Bit of a cheeky mirror here. All right. Okay. Let's see how this um this runs out for us. This guy might be on a mono white kind of. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, so this guy's running mono white rather than um, angels. <laughs> All right. Okay, what's he going to do here then? So he swings in with a Sarah Ascender, which I find weird because that's probably one of the better cards in his deck. If he gets to 30 life, then um, it has plus 5-5 five, five and flying. So I'm more than happy to kind of trade that off there. Okay. We'll go for Castle Ardenvale and Righteous Valkyrie. Uh, it's just a good blocker against his deck. Uh, the good thing about us having green is that we've got Collected Company. <laughs> He's got another one. Alright. So next turn we're playing Resplendent Angel, in case he does have green. <laughs> you know, it's as if, you know, we're right in this stuff. We'll play Resplendent Angel though, uh, because uh, the problem is, um, is that Alsade can give this Serra Ascendant protections. Um, so... What we could do here is we could double block the Sarah Ascendant if we need to. Johnny. Okay. Interesting. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Because that leaves him open um, and vulnerable to a Skyclave apparition. Get rid of the Sarah Ascendant here. The big old 6-6 six, six in the air. And then we can swing both of these. Ah, right, Johnny. As that is our biggest um, threat currently. A Johnny's pride mate, sure. Um, that can get pretty big quick, pretty quickly. Uh, but hopefully we can get a little bit bigger in the air. So at the beginning of each step, end step, if you gain more than five life, well, we'll gain five life off of this. So uh, we we'll should be creating two four fours. Swing for nine in the air. Uh, we can just really start chumping in here. It shouldn't be too hard to secure a win. And of course, with every angel that we create, we gain life equal to its toughness. So uh, we gain seven life for each angel we create. And honestly, as you guys have seen, this is kind of a normal game. Like we kind of pop off like this every single game. And it's quite ridiculous in that way uh, because there's not much that, you know, opponents can do. You know, so far we've beat a normal Slesnia life gain list. We've beat a Jun Sacrifice. Um, and yeah, there we can see we've ranked up. 
Um, and I've been recording for 16 minutes right now, and I've been 4-0. So this is how quickly you can rack up the wins with this deck. Um, so and I'll just carry on um, recording the, you know, as long as I'm winning. You know, because it's just fun. This deck is really fun to play. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, normally I um, I cut out the time between games, but I mean, that one just talked through. Okay, so this is a slightly slower hand here. Um, so we've got to try and think a little bit about whether we want to keep it. I think I will. Um, it's just a case that we miss our turn two um, currently. Okay, another Demir list. So might be Grixis actually with Drowned Catacombs, maybe. Um, we'll have to see. All right, okay, so we get Soul Warden. It's possible he has Cry. All right, well, you know, let's just see what happens with this game. Um, interesting, 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 interesting. swing through with these um, if he's got a shark um, that just means that we can resolve a resplendent angel okay if he's got a wrath effect we just refill our board Pretty much whatever he has here. Okay. So, Narset looking for cards. He gets an oath. Okay. What do we... What are we going to do next turn? I think next turn we just swing Resplendent Angel at the Nyssa. Okay. What do we do? I think we go like this. Swing like this. And then we've got a backup Resplendent Angel for if he kills one of them. Maybe we play our other speaker. But that's quite weak to a board wipe. Yeah, we, we, we want to still maintain some um, board presence for if he rafts us. Which means we probably shouldn't have played Resplendent Angel. Maybe. Okay. Interesting. Search for our counter. Let's play Skyclave. Target a search. Swing it like this, and then we'll keep up. Because he's in white, he's likely to have a lot more wrath effects. Okay. What does Oath of Terer Teferi actually say? Twice. Okay, well, you know. Let's get rid of that. Oh, we can, because it's five. Okay. It's a little bit of a misplay there, I cannot lie. Okay. Seeking so to ferry twice. What's he going to do? He's going to put that on the bottom. Alright. Interesting. So, will he be able to destroy our resplendent angel? Okay. There's only one way to find out. Ah, oh, he will be able to. Okay.
or not. Okay. Play bishop. And then resplendent angel. And this way we should... Make a 4-4 four, four here. And then we can make two 4-4s uh, four, at the end of our turn. Okay, and now we just have to pray that he doesn't have a wrath effect. Okay. Oath of Kaya. I'm surprised he would play Oath of Kaya if he didn't have a um, wrath effect. Yeah, so he doesn't have a wrath effect here. So... We can just swing in for... Oh, not quite. <laughs> Alright, hopefully we can hit lethal here. There we go. <laughs> Alright, so 5 and 0. Oh. Alright, this is another really good hand here. Um, it's a little bit slow. Um, and, and that is turn 1 and then turn 3. So we we just kind of need to draw a um, a two drop, or just even another one drop to play on turn two. Okay, him mulliganing against uh, us is really good. You're on the draw, which sucks a little bit, but it's fine. What deck is this guy playing? Okay, so this guy's playing some kind of um, sacrifice deck, I think. Okay, so we can play Speaker of the Heavens this turn, Speaker of the Heavens next turn. And then a Heliod, maybe. Uh, this is all kind of dependent on what he plays. Okay, Jund. So he's, he's a Jund deck. Alright. What's he going to play? We've got a Skyclave Apparition for anything, really. Um, concerning for us. Huh. Let's play Heliod. It's possible he has a counter spell for it, but... We'll split the counters evenly, so... Uh, just, you know, so this is targeting that. All right, so that's just to protect against Heartless Act, and also if he ca uh, takes one, um, just benefits benefits us a little bit. Okay. Wait. So he does hit Ulamog with his Tibolts. Okay. And this is 10, so of course it's way out of a range of our... So, uh, our Skyclave Apparition... We've got to kill this guy very quickly here. Or else he'll just mill us out. Alright. How irritating. He actually hit Zulamog. So if we play it like this, and then we give this lifelink, and we swing in. Put a 
plus one plus one counter on target creature. Let's just buff up Bishop a little bit. Okay, so now, currently, we have lethal. So we have lethal if this guy doesn't kill us. <laughs> there we go. So we just beat a turn three Ulamog with this deck. That is that just shows the sheer power.